Let's take a look at a few tricks to help you be able to quickly draw mammals when you see them in the field. We're going to start with some basic shape tricks and then look at a few details to help us understand how the legs and the head are put together. When I first see a mammal, I envision a box that goes across its shoulders to its rump and down to the ground. That gives me the general height of the animal relative to how wide it is. So if I want to draw that here on my, my piece of paper, I think about how tall is the animal versus how wide it is, from shoulder to rump, from top of hip, all the way down to the ground. The next thing that I look at is in that space, where is its belly? So a bear might be something like this. If I were drawing a deer, I would have longer legs and perhaps a belly up here. So this initial box helps me get a lot of information about the shape. This is where I sort of work out my problems of the proportions of, of a mammal. How tall is it versus how wide it is and at what point, how far down on that shape does its belly come. Mammals will have necks of different lengths so the next thing I do is I think of how far away from this box of body is its head. For my deer, I'm going to put my head here. Again, these initial lines, you can do them lightly and loosely so that if you want to move something later on, um, you don't have to do a lot of erasing. Here I put a head on. I can stop, check my proportions. I feel that this neck is a little bit too long. It's kind of getting a Garinook look. Make my neck a little bit shorter, and now I'm more pleased with what I've got. What we're going to do now is take a look at a little bit of the underlying anatomy of the mammal to help us be able to draw their legs. From our skull here, I've got a spine that comes down. At the back is a hip bone, and in the front is a shoulder blade, just like me. Also just like me, from the hip bone, there's a femur that comes out, little kneecap. I've got a tibia and fibula that go back. Those are my back leg bones, so that looks very much like a human being. From the front here, on the front limb, I've got a humerus that comes down to my radius and ulna. So the front part of the body here is just like a human being, because we all evolved from the same basic tetrapod ancestor. On all the mammals, the front limb is going to have, and, and the hind limb, up to this point, they're going to have basically the same conformation. The difference in how to draw a bear versus a dog versus a deer is going to be what we do with the foot and the hand of the animal from this point on. If I'm drawing a bear, If you look at this, this is very similar to a human being. You've got a hip, a knee, a heel, and the foot is flat on the ground. They have a shoulder, an elbow, and a wrist, and the hand is flat on the ground. So on this diagram here, that would be an animal holding its feet like that. 
So some animals have their foot flat on the ground. Thinking about what's going on with the underlying skeleton is going to be able to help you be able to draw this animal. If I'm drawing a dog or a cat, instead of walking flat-footed, these animals are going to be walking on their toes. So these bones here, the metacarpals uh, and the metatarsals, um, the metacarpals and the metatarsals, um, are going to be up off the ground. So you're going from flat-footed to walking on your toes, like this, on this drawing here, we've now gone up to our toes. Instead of being flat-footed, here's the foot bones here. You're walking now on your digits. And what this does is puts an extra joint in the leg of the animal. You've got a hip and knee this is the heel, but the heel is now up off the ground. If I want to take this animal and turn it into a deer, what I'm going to do is just take its toes now and it's going to walk actually on top of its toenails. So here is my deer. On the front leg, these bones here in the hand all fuse together into one long straight bone. And then it's also walking on its toenails on that foot. Deer uh, have a much more complex digestive system. They need to digest grasses. And that's a lot harder to digest than meat. So they have a lot of space inside their body for guts. Consequently, their uh, body is much deeper. Their rib cage drops down actually below the level here, or at the level of the knee and the, um, and the elbow. So that when I'm looking at a deer, I don't see I don't see the knee joint and I don't see the elbow joint extending below the body of the animal. What I see is just the front leg coming down straight, the elbow is completely hidden from me. I see this bend of the back leg because the knee joint is up against the body. So for the quick and dirty deer, right, here is the body. It has a front leg that comes down straight, and it has a back leg that's bent. So having an understanding of a little bit of the underlying anatomy here is going to help you be able to draw these mammals.